Hey, it's Avi from JustRightMusic.com. What up, person? If you have your ear anywhere near the tech world, you've probably been hearing about this new Apple Silicon chip, the M1 chip. You may have been hearing a whole lot of awesome things about them, and like me, you may have been wondering, should I grab a Ruski? Before we dive in, hit the subscribe button and bell below for more videos, helping you get everything out of the way so you can just write music. Everyone's talking about this Apple Silicon. It can run over a thousand tracks in Logic Pro. Neat. But is it time to get one? Is it time to take the plunge and get that sweet, sweet performance efficiency? Maybe. Maybe not. Now this new Apple Silicon chip seems promising, very promising, for basically every perspective except for one. Compatibility. Now Rosetta 2, which is Apple's translation system that allows you to run regular x86 or apps built for the Intel processors on the new Apple Silicon Max, and that's really amazing, and it seems to work very well. But it doesn't work well for everything, and that's a problem, especially for music production. Now, I found this great site called Scoring Notes, and here you can see a list of all the major notation softwares and their current status for M1 support. Now, as you can see, most of these only support Rosetta 2. So this is great if you're looking, if you're someone who uses music notation a lot, check out this website periodically to see when Apple Silicon is going to be supported by these major developers. If you're running a DAW, like anything that's not made by Apple, then you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to go and check out those developers one by one, or maybe find another aggregate site that I couldn't find to see what the support is like ongoing from there. This is the same exact deal with third-party plugins, which are really, 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 really common for like all musicians. So again, this is something you're gonna have to check with every single developer to see if they're going to support the new M1 Max. Now, if you've been writing or creating music for literally more than a year at this point, you may be aware that these developers sometimes take a lot of time to get these, uh, to get these new builds out. And even for just a software upgrade, like going from one version to Mac OS to the next, even that can take about six months to a year sometimes. Looking at you, Avid, just give us a 64-bit version of the Mbox Pro 3 interface. I want it, everybody wants it. It'll be so easy, I'm sure. Barely an inconvenience. So, do it. So some of these developers do take a lot of time to upgrade their builds for the new processor, especially now that it's hardware, we can expect that to take even longer. And this isn't to say they're not working hard and they're not doing everything in good faith. I'm sure they are. It's just hard from the consumer standpoint to want to upgrade your machine and your programs aren't compatible with it. And there is a time crunch here. Apple themselves are looking to com totally complete their transition to these new chips by the end of next year. These developers really got to get on it or make sure that they're programs run really, really, really well under Rosetta 2. Okay, so compatibility. <laughs> okay. Okay, so compatibility. That is a big one for sure. The next thing that I think is really important to consider is that it's still the early days with this M1 chip. This first Apple Silicon generation is, well, the first generation, which means it's automatically going to have the worst performance overall, no matter what, and it's going to have the worst reliability. So bugs and hiccups, these things are probably going to happen. The M1 chip is also limited to only 16 gigabytes of RAM and two terabytes of solid state storage. So that's not a lot. I mean, it's probably fine for most people, but if you just want more because you have the right to want more and deserve that choice, you're gonna have to wait. And that's the thing, you might not actually have to wait very long because the M1 chip is now, you know, nine months old or something at the time of this video's making. So the next one, the next chip is not far off. It's absolutely going to be out by before November 2021, which is going to be the first anniversary of the M1. Waiting for this new chip also gives developers the time to help build their applications natively for the new hardware. Let's think about that one more time. The chips will be better no matter what, and you have a better chance of being able to use your programs at full capability. All right, so finally, I'm gonna give you my personal opinion. You probably <laughs> might already know which way I'm leaning. Here's my answer when I ask myself, should I buy an Apple Silicon Mac to write music with? If you only use Apple software for music production, like GarageBand and Logic Pro, and you basically only use their virtual instruments and stock plugins, go get a new M1 Mac. It's great. If you can afford it, go get it. You're gonna see a ton of improvements. Everything's gonna work absolutely perfectly. Go do it. Great decision. However, if you are dependent on third-party software and plugins that currently do not support a native build or is even a little bit funky with Rosetta 2, I would wait that out. Like I mentioned, this could take years, but 
This is where I personally fall at the moment. I depend on too many other programs to really take the plunge and take the, chan and take the chance on something that's really important to my workflow, just not working at all. My DAW of choice is Logic Pro, but I do use a lot of third-party plugins. And the day that Sibelius and Note Performer both have official native M1 support, I'm 100% gonna go and grab one, but only if all of my third-party plugins at least are have official support for Rosetta 2. Thanks to Cat. So there you have it. I'm personally going to wait this one out. If you're going to take the plunge, or maybe you already have, let me know down in the comment section below. I'm super interested in hearing your experience. This was definitely a new type of video for me, so let me know what you think about that as well. If there's anything you'd like me to cover in a future video, just let me know down in the comments. Let me know all the things. If you're looking for some tools to help you level up your melody game, check out my free guide, Seven Ways to Write a More Effective Melody. These tips are proven to take your melodies and transform them for the better. You can use them on any melody in any genre. Head to justwritemusic.com. There's a link down in the doobly-doo. Thank you so much for being here, here at the end, the end of all things. If you understood that reference, you're, a, you're an amazing person and I want to know who you are. Uh, yeah, so thank you. I am in your service. I'm Avi from JustWriteMusic.com. Don't forget to be awesome. Peace out.